Hello, I'm Michael Hackney, and in today's Kisslicer 1.6 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create and use profiles, and I'll throw in a few goodies along the way. Stay tuned. In Kiss Slicer, you modify settings to tell the slicer how to generate the G-code that will print your parts. You could, every time you have a new model that you want to slice, simply change the settings. Let's say, for instance, I wanted to change the number of loops to 3.5, and I wanted a skin thickness of 0.8 millimeters. I wanted to change the infill to, say, 10%, and I wanted to change to a straight infill. I could then go up, slice the part, and save that g-code and print and everything would be fine. But that gets to be a little tedious after a while if uh, you're changing settings frequently or uh, like me you have particular groups of settings that you use over and over again. And in fact let's go take a look. I have uh, this profile called normal rounded infill and it's by far my favorite uh, uh, settings that I use for many many parts. Um, and I like to use it. So I have created a profile um, that has pre-configured all of the settings and each time I come in to print a part, if that's the profile I want to use, I can select it from uh, this uh, drop-down menu from the growing list of other profiles that I have. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create these and more importantly, tell you a little bit about how KISS uh, uses them and works with them under the covers because that can sometimes be a little confusing to people, but once you understand it, uh, I think it'll make sense and you'll learn how, how to, to work with them properly. So here I have my normal rounded infill. I could then go in and start to make some changes, uh, some tweaks to some of these settings for a particular model. Let's say I have a model loaded and I wanted to increase the number of loops and I wanted to change the infill density to 25%. When I make those changes, the next time I, I quit Kisslicer, Kiss will actually overwrite these changed values into the normal rounded infill file, uh, profile file. So it will overwrite my original values and I'll have lost them. And I may not remember, you know, what all of the settings were uh, the next time I load KISS and load this rounded infill and recognize that, oh gee, uh, things have changed, that's not the way I remember them. Well, don't fear. KISS has a great feature called reference settings, which allows you to create uh, basically a backup copy of all of your uh, you know, favorite uh, profiles so that if you do make changes to them you can always restore from that backup copy very conveniently and I'll show you how to do that right now. So let's actually go down and take a look and here in my Kiss Slicer folder I see I've got my subdirectories for each of the different types of profiles that Kiss uh, uses. There's a materials um, uh, folder and notice that they all have an underscore that's just uh, what KISS names them so there's underscore materials underscore printers where all my printer profiles are underscore styles and down here you'll actually see that um, normal rounded infill style that I like to use often and then you've got uh, your uh, support styles you can also create a reference folder and by convention, that reference folder is named underscore reference, but you really could name it anything you'd like. You could call it, you know, saved settings or saved profiles. And it can be located anywhere. You could put, a, put this on Dropbox. You could put this on another hard drive. You could even put it on the, uh, the SD card on one of your printers because these profiles are actually quite compact. They're not very large and you can put many, many of them on a, on a compact flashcard. It doesn't even take up a lot of space. The idea is you want to have a backup set of your profiles in a folder and tell KISS, and we'll show you how to do this in just a minute, tell KISS where that folder is. And KISS will never touch these files. So let's go take a look at that. Up on the file menu, and I'm on a Macintosh, so you don't see my menu bar, but on Windows and Linux, the menu bar is at the top of the window. But trust me, there's a menu option up here called File, and underneath that File menu, there is a Choose and Restore Reference Settings command. I choose that. 
dialog pops up and what I'm going to do here is choose that reference folder. And by convention, um, Kiss Slicer uses underscore reference for the folder, but again, you can name it anything you want and put it anywhere you want. I select it, I say OK. So now I've told Kiss where my reference settings are. Let's see how that's actually used. I'm going to open up my profiles dialog. Here's my normal rounded in fill that I use and uh, frequently and like. And let's say that I make some changes to it. I change uh, the infill, I change the number of loops, maybe I change the print speed, I change the um, jitter and the angle. And so I've made a lot of changes. I go up, I slice my part, save the G code, print it, and um, I want to recover what the original set of settings were for this particular rounded infill profile. I can do that very easily by going up to the file menu and there is a quick restore reference settings option and there's a keyboard shortcut that goes with it. On the Macintosh it's uh, shift command R. can't recall what it is on Windows off the top of my head but it's something similar and same with Linux. I want you to watch the Kiss Slicer um, style tab down here when I when I choose this. Here we go. Notice what happened. It reset all of the settings back to the default values that were stored in the reference profile that I had, had saved previously. Any changes that I make while I'm working in KISS to this profile will never overwrite the profiles that are in that references folder. They're protected. And that's the idea. KISS won't touch them. If you want to make any changes, say you've made a, a, a tweak to a profile like the rounded infill profile um, that you would prefer uh, you know, in the future. So maybe 3.5 number of loops. If I want that to become my new reference for rounded infill, I have to manually copy it from um, the uh, style folder into the references style folder. Uh, you have to do that manually. And, and that's by design so that KISS will never touch or modify those references. You always know what you have. Pretty straightforward. Really powerful feature. I recommend once you've created a couple, you know, even a handful of, uh, of profiles that you use, um, style, support, and material profiles in particular, go ahead and set up a references folder and uh, put those profiles in there and set this up so that you can always recover back to a known good uh, state of profiles uh, if you do accidentally make some changes and can't remember uh, what those changes were. So that's reference settings, a really powerful feature. Uh, there are a couple of other features that are related to this. The next one I'm going to talk about is uh, a project or a project file and this is a new feature in Kisslicer 1.6. And up on the menu there is a uh, option or menu called project and there's a, an option called save project as which I've just selected and here it is and you notice that it's going to save a what's called a kiss slicer project file with a .ksp extension so let's call this tts tool rack and save it and now i've saved a project file um, for this particular uh, session and what a project file is is simply the combination of the style, support, printer, and material profiles and settings that you use to slice this part. All saved in one convenient file. And what you can do then is uh, share that project file with other users. You can save it for yourself if you want to remember uh, sometime in the future exactly how you sliced a part or maybe you want to slice a new part and uh, you remember that that uh, the way you sliced, say, this uh, tool rack was pretty good and the part turned out pretty nice, I'd like to recover that for a new part, I can simply load in that project file and get, um, get all of those settings. So you load a project file by going up to the project menu and there's an option load project slash g-code settings. I'll choose that. The dialog pops up and here's that TTS tool rack project that I had previously created but I also created a tutorial project uh, file here that I was going to use for this demonstration. So I'm going to select that one instead, open it up, and now you'll see that it has updated all of the uh, profiles 
um, to include the, a double uh, right facing triangle in front of the name. And this is a visual reminder that this is actually uh, coming from a, a project file. So it gives you the name of the project and then it gives you the name of the profile underneath it. And you'll see that it did one for support, it did one for the printer, and it also did one for material. So now I've recovered that set of profiles from the project file, and you can actually see here that what it has changed the values, numloops 2.5, infill 16.7, rounded infill. I could go and slice and print this part, and um, you know it should turn out as good as the, uh, the original part that I uh, used uh, the project file from. So that's project files, really powerful feature, great way to recover um, sets of profiles or save sets of profiles that you can use them in the future. There's another really cool feature in Kiss Slicer that I want to talk about, and that is under the Printer Firmware tab. And down here you'll see this checkbox called Include Comments. I'm going to uncheck it um, to show you what happens when that's not checked. And I'm going to slice this part and then when it's finished slicing, I'm going to save the G-code. And then we're going to take a look at the G-code. So we're going to save this there. Okay, now let's go take a look at that G-code. And it's in this folder, and there it is. My favorite editor pops up. And what we're looking at is mean and lean G-code. There is not a single comment in the file anywhere to be seen. Maybe compact, but not very useful, not very informative. Let's see what happens when we check that box. So go back to our profile settings, printer uh, firmware. I'm going to say include comments. I'm going to save. It's going to come up and I can give it a new name. So let's call it um, comments. Save it. Now let's go take a look at that file. And there it is. And we'll take a look, and you'll see immediately that there are many, many lines of comments. In fact, um, if you just kind of pay attention, you'll see here are my printer settings. Uh, we can scroll down. There's my material settings. There's my style settings. There's my support settings. So it has saved all of the settings that were used to generate this G-code file right into the G-code itself as comments. And then as we scroll down further into the actual working G-code, we see that it's uh, put in comments there, too, to tell me where um, layers begin. Here's the beginning of a layer. Um, it'll show you where the end of layers are. It gives you useful information like, uh, you know, the, the print speed, filament um, speed, and, you know, other attributes there. So I find this really convenient for analyzing G-code um, if I'm looking for problems or I just want to see, uh, you know, how the G-code um, looks, um, it makes it easy to find, you know, where layers begin and start, things like that. Really powerful feature. But why it's important, now let's go back to Kiss Slicer. Let's open up our profile settings and let's go over to the style dialog and let's change um, styles to something, uh, my normal rounded infill style. Similar to the way you can load project files if you remember when I uh, selected the project menu, the option is load project slash g-code settings. So when I select that and the dialog comes up, you'll notice that uh, the project files are highlighted, but my g-code file is not. On the Macintosh, there's this options button. I don't know if this is true on Windows and Linux. Uh, you'll have to take a look and see for yourself. But if there is, you simply collect, click it, and now it gives me a choice of what kind of file to look for. I can either look for KSP files or G-code files or actually all files, which is normally how I have it set up. And now the G-code file has, um, has highlighted, uh, so I can actually select it. And I can then click Open. Now notice what happened. It updated the style and renamed it again with the double right arrow so you can see that this is a, a special style that was loaded and not one of KISS's normal um, profiles. It loaded this profile from the file called TTS Tool Rack Fixed Comments. Um, so it was able to retrieve all of the various settings from the um, comments that are embedded in the G-code file. There's the support, here's the printer, 
and here is uh, the material profile. So it's a really great way of storing and saving the settings that were used to slice a particular part. So sometime in the future, say three, four months from now, you want to remember exactly how you slice that part because you have another part that's very similar that um, you know makes sense to use those same settings. You could simply load the G code if you'd save the comments uh, from that original part and then you would have all of the, the correct settings to slice it and print it. So it's a great convenience and uh, will save a lot of time and actually is a great way to uh, kind of store uh, settings and profiles that that uh, you know you created a part with. So that is um, is projects and uh, G code comment uh, saving and, and restoring. A couple of other things I wanted to talk about, and that is when let's go ahead and select my favorite uh, rounded infill. When you want to maybe tweak a profile uh, to change perhaps the infill density, maybe even the infill style and the speed, the tendency for people to starting with KISS is to, you know, select the profile that they want and then start making changes. And then once they've made the changes, they'll click the copy button. And I'm going to do that in a minute. I'm not going to do it right now. Click the copy button and, you know, give it a new unique name. And so now they have a copy of... Um, of the changes that they've made that they can use for other models in the future. But the downside is you've also made changes to your original profile. Now, sure, you can recover that if you've set up reference uh, settings simply by reloading them. But, you know, maybe you haven't set up reference settings yet. Um, it can be a little bit of a pain. So what I recommend doing is rather than making changes to a profile and then creating a copy to create a copy with the new new changes, make the copy first, and then make the changes to the copy. So I click on copy and I'm able to give a new name. I'm going to call this um, normal, uh, let's call it octagonal, octagonal infill. And now I've made a copy and you notice that it's got all of the settings that were uh, associated with the, the rounded infill version because it's simply a copy. I can come in here now and can make the changes that I want. Say I wanted to increase the infill to 50%, change the loops to three and a half, uh, change this angle to you know 180 degrees down, increase the print speed a bit. And now when I quit Kiss Slicer, it will save this new profile octagonal infill with all of these new settings. And I can use that in future uh, sessions uh, working with Kiss. Remember, if you're using reference settings, this new profile is not automatically saved in the references folder. If you want to uh, add this new profile to references, you need to go and manually copy it from in this case, the underscore style folder into the references underscore style folder uh, in order to have it be one of your references. So don't forget to do that if that's something uh, you want to uh, to save as a reference file. Uh, then one last thing in KISSLICER 1.6, there is this new rename button. I can click that and this gives me the option of just simply renaming an existing profile. It's kind of convenient if you uh, misspelled like octagonal I do frequently. I can go in and fix that and then click um, OK and now I've renamed the profile. So that's about it for um, settings and profiles. I hope you learned something here, and uh, don't forget to set up your references folder and store some reference profiles there. And especially don't forget to, um, to click that checkbox for include comments in your G-code. A really powerful feature. There's no reason not to do it, and it will save your rear at some point in the future uh, when you forget how you sliced a particular part and you want to remember. So that's it for now. Look forward to the next uh, Kiss Slicer tutorial, and thank you very much. Thank you.